Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the on track series video for the German tier 10 medium tank, the E50M. Now this is a tank that has been reforged, well it had its line reforged so there's been some fairly big changes to some of the tanks along the line and I thought hey, perfect chance to get the on track series video out there for. I mean it was buffed a while ago, it was like a couple of months ago, but I did have a few games for it and it was like hey let's put it together if you've never seen the on track series before check out the playlist that this video is in basically what we do is we go from tier 5 to tier 10 in the line show ace tanker replays for those tanks show off what they can do what crew setups we run equipment etc etc give you a general feel for how the line handles and what it looks like when they're playing at the best and basically yeah what you can expect from the line when it gets fully upgraded and the E50M line, it's a solid, solid line. It's a great fun line. Since they buffed it, especially, because there was a few tanks that I disliked, like the Panther. Oh, like the Panther. I n I'd never liked the Tier 7 Panther. It was just like, this is just a chore. This is an absolute chore to play. I just never felt like it had much going for it. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that anyway. But the, you know, the, And then there's tanks like the E50, which are absolutely beautiful and always have been, although it used to be better. The whole line on the whole, though, is, is a lot of fun to play. It's not a stinky line. You know, it's not a line where you're sitting there going, oh, this is dreadful, right? The whole line has good tanks going up, tanks that are a bit meh, but for the most part, it's not painful, and you'll always be able to do something, unlike some of the other lines that really needed reforges. So this first tank is the Tier 5. It's the VK3001H. It's a heavy tank. It's the only heavy tank in the line because it's the tank that leads also to the... E100 as well. So, yeah, this is starts off at tier 5. So, what kind of crew do I run on the VK 3001H? Well, I run Born Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Trap Mechanic, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Run and Gun, Off Road Drive In. Run those perks because it is a heavy tank, so I want to make sure that it hits its top speed easily and then has all the best gun perks it can possibly get. Because this little tier 5 heavy tank is a solid tier 5 heavy because it's, it's, it's got no not really got much armor its mobility is not that great but this gun is fantastic it's a real treat to have on this tank it's got a good pen at like 157 and 200 odd on the premium i think and it's just it's pretty damn accurate and it's reloads pretty solid on the whole this tier 5 is a solid tank to play and it gives you a good feel for tier 5 heavies really like i said the only downside to it it can side scrape which is good but it's only downside is that it doesn't have much armor and if people shoot you through the lower plate which is big and fat you're gonna have your engine broken every single time and that is something you've got to be very very aware of with this tank is that the engine will break a lot it's really frustrating in terms of equipment i run rammer vents and optics because that just gives me a broad spectrum of everything it makes sure my v-range is as high as possible make sure that my dpm is as good as possible with the accuracy and stuff like that so that's just what i'd run on this tank so in this game with the vk 3001h we're on proc and we've managed to work this little ridge line to our greatest effect we've managed to get a good few shots out get a good lot of damage we're up to 2k damage with 1100 assistance and now there's only four tanks left and they're all over there and yeah th this vk it's a good introduction to both the heavy line and to the medium line. I mean, essentially, this is a good opener for the heavy line because if you're talking about the tier 5, 6, and 7, they don't really have too much armor. They're all about ha having this absolutely rip-roaring gun and then making the most of that, and that's what this tier 5 is about, same as the VK3601H and the Tiger 1 is. They don't have armor. They have semi-okay mobility, but they're all about how good god damn good the gun is and this tank is exactly the same this i think it's 5.5 slash 7.5 it's what the old conish used to be it's a beast of a gun and you can, like i say you just tear tanks to sh absolute shreds just be wary though that when you go against tanks with dirt guns and they load heat or ap depending on which tank it is well it's mostly heat those with 100 on pen on the heat or more will go straight through your lower plate and butch you for like 400 so just be aware of that but the vk 3001 h we finished with a nice little total we finished with the epic victory the four kills 2.7k damage 1200 assistance which is actually nearly 4k combined for a tier 5 which is solid ace tanker confederate high caliber and 2k base xp nice game for the 3001 h and yeah that's the only heavy tank in the line because obviously this is where it splits to either go to the 3601 h or the vk 3002 m 
which is a tank that I've abs I absolutely love this tank. Always have, always will. It's got solid mobility, it's got a great gun, good reload, it can side scrape, it's got, you know, decent armor for a tier 6. Meaning that if you go against tier 6s and some tier 7s, you can side scrape them out and bounce stuff and all that sort of good stuff. It's a solid all-rounder. I have a lot, I always had a lot of fun playing this tank and it was just a great, great time to run around in. There's two premium tanks, the Poodle and the Wojciech that are nearly identical to this tank but they have some slight differences in the fact that they just lose engine power for some reason and also their guns aren't as accurate as this gun is but apart from that they are fairly similar so in terms of a crew on the 3002m i actually run the same crew that i run on me50m and that is born leader rapid reload sixth sense situational awareness trap mechanic steady aim run and gun and controlled impact now i run that on my well, all the way through from the 3002M, the Panther, the Panther 2, E50, and E50M, I run that crew all the way f through. And simple reason is, is that these tanks, if you are ramming same tier tanks, are all very, very good at ramming, depending on what you, you know, what you get. They're all very heavy tanks, and they've all got pretty solid mobility. So if you go and slam something, you're going to do some significant damage. And if you run controlled impact, then obviously you're limiting the damage you're taking yourself. And because all of them have absolutely fabulous guns as well, in terms of their accuracy, you don't really need snapshot all that much. So you can drop the, so you can run steady aim and run and gun to make sure that your gun is 10% more accurate and 10% more accurate on the move. And then run off-road driving to make sure that you've got no problem getting up to your top speed. And then off, and then controlled impact, sorry, to make sure that, you know, that ram is going to be so sweet and brilliant. That's why I run that. And I run that on, like I say, all the crews from VK3002M up to the E50M. In terms of equipment, I run rammer, vents, and optics. Now, obviously, you could just drop vents and put a spore liner on if you wanted to go ramming things. Bear in mind, though, obviously, you want to be ramming things at your own tier and maybe some tier 7s maybe light tanks and mediums you just got you've got to pick the right tanks to ram but obviously if you're looking at tier fives and stuff like that, which you're going to see quite often as well you can ram them for quite a lot but yeah so you can drop the vents for like you know for the spore liner if you wanted to but i do run rammer vents and optics because i obviously like i say make the most of the gun make the most of the view range and the dpm and just make everything all rounded. So obviously you get the best view range you can possibly get with the code optics. And then vents helps all that. And then DPM as well. So we're on Pilsen. And we got the team structure spawns. Which are kind of random. And we've managed to push around the back of the enemy team. We're up to 2.3k damage. 758 assistance. And just as we pull around that corner. It's like oh that broom bar is staring at us. We would no. No not, not doing that. And then we get dirt by a Tiger 1. It's like, wait, he fired HE at me. I was expecting to lose like 240 health there. Has he got the dirt gun? He must have the dirt gun, right? And then he splashes this guy for 134. I'm thinking, hmm, I think that guy's got the dirt gun. But then the Brum bar is coming in. It's like, no, mate, no, 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 leave me alone. And we managed to dodge him, but unfortunately he shuts down the KV-85. But he's absolutely screwed. And we managed to shut him down. Now we know the Tiger 1's coming along. We've got the hit points. I could probably kill this guy. In, well, I know I can kill this guy in two shots. So we slam the two shots in and finish off the Tiger 1. There's two tanks left. There's the Leo in the middle. And there is the Heavy Tank at C3. Going to try and get to the Leo. But unfortunately, we're not going to manage to get the kill. Because if I just aimed properly instead of auto-aiming, I probably would have got the shot. But there we go. So yeah, on Pilsen, when I get these spawns, I always like to go to F7. Because you can get good cross shots like you saw along JK if people push. And... If there's not many people on that side, you can push straight across. And we finished that game with 7 kills, 3.2k damage, 758 assistance. The Ace Tanker, Devastator Medal, High Caliber, Top Gun, 2.3k base XP. A nice game for the 3002M in a Tier 7 matchup. That's it. If you, if you attack aggressively on Pilsen like that, you can make the most of it. And this 3002M is just a fantastic Tier 6 medium tank. It's honestly such a good tank. And it's... A great thing to grind through and you'll have a lot of fun with it. But now we're on to the tier 7 which is the Panther. And I'm going to make it a very aggressive play at the start of this game. You're going to see it again in the E50. Where if nothing pushes to E4 on their team and I push their aggressive link. I can side scrape off that rock at E4 and spot everything that goes down the AB line. Get a good amount of assistance and get a good amount of damage off on them. Um, we're top tier so we're going to make the most of it. In terms of... 
the Panther, though, it did receive some love in the tanks reforged for the E50M. So the Panther ended up getting the 75mm gun reload buff to 4.6 from 4.8. Its damage actually went up from 135 to 150, which really increased its DPM, which is nice, because that's one thing that absolutely sucked on this tank. And the turret traverse went from 26 degrees to 30, which means, again, the turret keeps up with the tracks. And it got a load of other buffs for the stop grind, which is quite nice as well. Now, it really needed that, the Panther, because the Panther, would, had, it was such a chore to play. Because you didn't really have any DPM. You had, a, you know, a reload that was fairly quick, but with 135 damage, especially at tier 7, for a lot of the tanks you were facing, you were doing absolutely nothing to people. And it was just... It felt crap, because your mobility was sort of, yeah, it's okay, but not the best. You had absolutely no armor, and you had a gun that was a bit troll with very low alpha and, you know, fairly low DPM. You've seen it was 1600, and it just, like I say, it made the Panther, like, ugh, to play, and it was the, the pain in the grind, is the way I put it. It was the tank that you played and went, this is just dreadful, I, I, I'm not enjoying this one bit. Now they've buffed it, the Panther's definitely a little bit better. It's a little bit nicer because the DPM is higher, which naturally means you kill things quicker, and it's just not as much of a chore. And obviously 6.0 as well helps in the fact that the crew skills that you've seen that I use in the 3002 bit means that the gun handling is really, really good, and it, it doesn't troll anywhere near as often as it used to. Although it still is a really accurate gun that does love to miss the odd shot here and there, you can make the most of it. And as you've seen here on Lakeville, I was like, this aggressive push has gone well so far. We're up to a thousand damage, a thousand assistance. We've managed to halt anything that was pushing towards the town, but they've sent a lot down the valley. And I think, you know what? I'm going to trust in my team. That's, I know who I can hear the, the, the screams. I know that's a dangerous, dangerous game. Look how many people we've got back in our cap. I think, you know what? I'm going to trust them. I'm going to trust that they can defend that cap, and I'm going to push up and try and clear whatever was towards their base, and then try and get up behind these guys and come up through the valley, because that's what they're not going to expect. But then we randomly find this lioness that's camping in the base, and it's like, um, friend, what are you doing here? Okay, I wasn't expecting that. And we're just going to try and trash this guy with our great DPM. Now, I'm not sure whether he was running the autoloader and he's currently loading the autoloader, or if... I feel like I caught him out there and he fired his last shot in this clip and that meant that we could out DPM him. So we got rid of that guy. Now we're going to try and angle for a shot at the, back, at the top of the arrow V39, which is exactly what we get. And like I say, the accurate gun means that we're going to hit that every time. And thankfully, I trusted my team. And my team, for the most part, has got rid of the tanks that were in our base, which is great. But we're still going to go follow through with the plan. We're going to try and get up behind these guys through the two line, through the valley, essentially. Like I said, I, I put my trust in the team because there was a lot of them back there and I thought, you know what, they can deal with that. If they don't, oh well. If they do, then I can get up behind these guys and I'll have enough time to get through their base, get up behind them. Because there's no... I, I could have gone back from D4, but I would have gone back to help my team and then been stuck at H4 directly in front of the, their guns with 369 hit points and every one on their team would have been looking our way which would have been not that good for me so it was like okay i'll cut through the valley and therefore i can get up behind and flank these guys so we're here we've got up behind them it's like oh hello mr oh it's a cromit we've got up behind the cromit stop comet and we shut him down it's like well hello mr m6 as well let me just put pay to you Goodbye, sir. And the Tiger one actually got shut down by the ELC. And we finished the game with a no set for the Panther. I'd say a lot better to play these days with the epic victory. Six kills, 2.9k damage, 1100 assistance, ace tanker, top gun, and 1991 base XP. Like I said, the Panther is a lot better these days. It's a lot nicer to grind through than it used to be. It used to be horrendous. People probably did like it, but I always thought it was absolutely horrific to play just because it had not really much dpm it had low alpha and it just felt like a relic of the past but with the buffs it received in that reforge wonderful wonderful times and now we're on to the panther 2. Now panther 2 i did like back in the day because the gun was filthily accurate it had a fairly nice reload for 240 alpha and it just sort of took the panther to the next level which is exactly what you want from a tier 8 right well from the tank that follows on from the tier 7. 
It had 240 alpha back in the day when I ground through it. It had the same gun as the Tiger 1. And back then it wasn't that great. I didn't like it because it didn't really have the pen. Then they added this, I think it's an L100, something like that. The, the next gun with the really high pen and even better accuracy. And it just, it felt really great to use. And then they went and buffed it again in this E50M tanks reforged which was you know glorious for this tank so what did they buff on the panther 2 well on the panther 2 they changed a lot of the stock grind and they also made the turret traverse go from oh sorry just the traverse speed from 28 to 30 which is nice they made the dpm better by just buffing the alpha from 240 to 280 which is lovely and then they made a lot of the stock grind again a lot better by removing certain guns that were pointless and then yeah, just making DPM accuracy, that sort of thing, better on some of the stock guns. And the Panther 2, yeah, 280 Alpha, it's really nice because it's the same as it is on the Trinity. The, the reload, 6 seconds for 280, is actually really solid. And it means that you can roll for like nearly 300 quite often, which is great. Or, you, you know, the lowest you roll. You're not going to roll for sub 200 like you did on the 240 Alpha guns nearly as much. And. Yeah, it's just made the Panther 2 decent. And I'd say it's it's not a barnstorming tier 8 tank by any means. I just think it's a okay tank, right? It's not mediocre. It's just, yeah, it's all right. So, we're on Pearl River. And we went straight to the middle of Pearl River because it gives you, especially when it is an encounter variant of this tank, of this tank, of this map. Sorry. You can get to this position and you can get shots at people in the cap or going towards the cap. You can spot it as well as you see and we're getting a good amount of assistance from it. And you can try and cut people off and get good flanking shots. This middle area is a very, very strong position to take. It's kind of like the middle on mines in that way. Although there is more ways up than one into the middle of mines. So we popped a blind shot there you saw and we hit. That's because we knew the UDES was there a minute ago. And I thought, you know what, now he's got unspotted. Is he going to have moved or is he going to have pulled back into that bush? You know what, we'll pop a blind shot, see if he has. And he did, so we end up getting the damage. We're up to 1,400 damage and 1,900 assistance. There's two people in the cap and not really anyone contesting it. We've got a lot of people on the one too. So it's like, I've got to get him. So we've, we've got the premium loader because we're not going to be able to pen the Type 4 Heavy truly at all, really, with the standard. And we're getting some shots in. But we have reset the cap, which is great. There is the TNH VZ-51 that's on that hill over there and the UDES that I was kind of afraid of. So I've had to move as quickly as I can. There you go, the UDES fighters to these rocks here to try and get safe. And then I can try and side scrape off these rocks. Because that's something that these tanks can do is side scrape if you play it right. And you can block damage, which is nice. Definitely nice about these, these mediums. We take a 400 slap off the Type 4. Then this Udez comes in, it's like, what's the plan, Udez? And he gets shut down. We're up to 3k assistance, 2.3k damage. Just watching what the Type 4 is doing. He's actually looking the other way, so we pop up and get a big shot into his side. Now we know there's only three tanks left. There's the G-Saw, the TNH VZ-51, and the Artillery. So we're just going to try and get there as quick as we can. Like I said, the mobility on the Panther 2 is fairly solid. Again, it's another tank that is pretty damn good at ramming again i ran rammer vents and optics exactly the same as i did on the panther and on the 3002m because the gun's are already solid you don't really need vert stabs that much if you wanted to again to run up the the ramming meme you could definitely put spore liner on again and have a bit of fun with ramming with the control impact that on the crew that i showed in the 3002m section that's if you want to run it in meme way like i say i tend to have the crew for the added ability to meme and not lose as much and then maximize everything else on the tank like i say ram of vents and optics is always a great way for the panther 2. so we finished the game with the panther 2 on pearl river with two kills 2.8k damage 3.1k assisted ace tanker the confederate medal 1691 base xp nice game for the panther 2 which is yeah it's an okay tank like i say it, it's okay it doesn't do anything wildly great it doesn't do anything really badly it just sort of sits there and goes hey i'm a tank and i do okay yep that's pretty much the panther 2 so we're on to the e50 which is old favorite and it did receive some love finally in that reforge so what did, what changed about the e50 well it received again a load of changes to make the grind a little bit better and then 
on the turret armor, it changed to 200 millimeters of frontal turret armor. It says frontal armor, but it was turret armor, which is kind of nice because you're going to ricochet a, little, a fair few more shells off that turret, which is fine. But it's not out of this world great, and it's not going to make as much difference to it, really, to be honest. But it did also receive a buff to its reload from 11 to 10 and a half seconds on the 105, which again makes the reload just a little bit nicer. It used to be that half a second is nice. You definitely feel the difference. I always feel that the, the main problem with the E50 was the aim time nerf it received. When they gave it three seconds aim time, it was just horrible. And it, it was not nice. It definitely is a tank that would have benefited from 2.3 second aim time instead of 3. That was a partial killer to it. I mean, back in the day, the pump, the E50M, sorry, was... Well, the E50, sorry. We'll get, we'll get there in the end. The E50, the tier 9, was absolutely utterly ridiculous it was just crazy because it had 2.1 second aim time great dpm the great mobility for ramming it was an all-round fantastic tank but then they nerfed it into the ground gave it the three second aim time gave it a terrible reload gave it terrible accuracy well it still got the great accuracy terrible aim time i should say and it just killed it it you could still have fun with it but it killed it because the aim time was tragic really if they'd just given it that little bit of a turret buff and then also changed the aim time to 2.3. We'd have been sorted for this tank and it would have been great. It's still solid though. I still love the E50. Always will. It's always got a place in my heart. Always, always, always. And in this game on Lakeville, we've done exactly the same as you saw in the Panther replay. We pushed aggressively to this rock. We've spotted out. We've got 3.2k damage. Got a you know, nice amount of damage out. At people crossing we've ended up with 1700 assistance from people shooting them and we've managed to use this rock to our advantage to side scrape off of it and block 1800 because that's one thing the e50m is really good at it's got solid armor the turret armor like i say is still penable by a lot of tier 9 and 10s quite easily if they hit the flat portion but it helps you a little bit more against the lower tiers in bouncing and ricocheting essentially but the upper plate is great and the side armor is great so when it comes to side scraping and you know wiggling while you're moving you can ricochet things off your upper plate and your frontal armor quite well and if you use that to your strength and beat you can be really aggressive in this tank and that is why i love it so much because the the ability to be so aggressive in this tank same as the e50m has always been a nice feature so we managed to shut down the t23 e3 that was attacking our friend and now that we know that heavy tank is currently preoccupied with the medium tank at c9 I'm just going to push this 52 lease. Unfortunately, with Ricochet off his turret, I was going to go for the ram, but I spotted the SU-130 PM at the back, and it's like, nah, you know what? I was going to rush the the CS, but I'm not going to do it now that guy's there. But now I've shot him, and he's backing off. It's like, okay, ram time. Pop the shot into the CS-52, but don't pen. And it was like, oh, come on now. We ricocheted off that guy, unfortunately, because that is something that's a little bit of a drawback on the E50. You've only got 220 pen and 270 on the APCR. 220 is not that great for the tier 9. But 270 on the APCR premium is definitely good enough to pen most of what you're going to face. And that's what you need for something like a Type 4 Heavy, 270 pen. But a lot of tanks, say the M46 pattern or the 390 Alpha tanks that have like 260 premium, so standard pen, sorry. They're all going to have to not really have to load premium that much to face some of, a lot of the tanks you're going to have to face. Whereas the E50 does. And that can be annoying. So we got a shot into that guy. 52 lease again before he got shut down by the 7-1. And we're up to 6.2k damage and 2.8k assistance. It's like, wait, where's that TD? It's, yeah, it's still the SU-130PM from earlier on. He's currently hiding behind a building, which is perfectly safe from me, but not anyone else. And he gets shut down. Finished the game with a very great total for the E50 and finished with the epic victory. Four kills, 6.2k damage, 2k base XP. What's that? That's like, what, 9k combined? The patrol duty, ace tanker, high caliber, steel wall, 2k base XP, like I say. And yeah, we've got the patrol duty for spotting out a load of tanks and getting a lot of assistance from loads of different tanks. We've got the steel wall, because this tank is really great at blocking damage if you use it correctly. Like I say, side scraping and things like that. And we had a lot of great fun with it. And like I said, the E50 is just, it's, it's memes. It can be memes, and it can be a hell of a lot of fun to play. 
But now we're on to the E50M, which is the tier 10 in the line. And the E50M did receive some changes, but only one. And uh, to be honest, the, the one change it got was, yeah, sure, it was nice, but not particularly good enough. And that was the... It basically just gained a turret buff. Which, don't get me wrong, it needed. But it went from 185 turret armor to 230. That's the only change that the E50M got. And that was slightly disappointing. Because the thing is... I mean, the, the, the turret buff, don't get me wrong. The turret buff is great. That means that you can bounce quite a lot off the turret now. It ricochets a lot more, a lot, lot more than it used to. Which is fantastic. We still get butchered by higher pen tanks at tier 10. But I say it means you, on ridge lines and things like that, you hull down using your gun depression as much as possible. There's a lot of times where, like I say, you, you can bounce things more than you never used to be able to, which is great. But the thing is, this tank had a, this tank had a strength. And that was how filthily accurate the gun was. And the gun is filthily accurate. And that is a wonderful thing about the E50M. The problem is... Every other tank now, because of the crew skills, is absolutely filthy. And this tank, yes, while the gun is even filthier, you don't feel the benefit of those crew skills anywhere near you do on any of the other tier 10 mediums. And its DPM is still shocking compared to a lot of them now as well, which is sad. The 7.3 second reload is just long. And I really wish that, that got, it got buffed down to possibly like... 6.8 seconds or something like that would have been a lot nicer for the E50M. I mean, you go against a tank like the CS59 in front of us, which is a tier 9 medium tank. While sure, it doesn't have the armor like we do. It's a tier 9 medium tank, and it has a 6.6 .6 second reload. <laughs> with all the stuff in. And that just makes me sad for the E50M. But on the E50M, we're on Kaunas. And like I say, equipment-wise, I actually run Rammer, Spore Liner, and Optics for the memes and then the same crew that you saw in the 3002 m world the e50 i do switch between running rammer vents and optics and rammer spore liner and optics like i say depending on what memes i want to run but yeah i run rammer spore liner and optics and then the crew you see because you can get some pretty damn meme rams with the e50m you've got 270 pen on your apcr which is wonderful with great shell velocity you've got 300 odd pen on the heat. I think it's 330, but I could be perfectly wrong. It's great heat. And it means that you can see tanks like Type 5's heavies. And you can just laugh at them, which is always nice. Compared to stuff that has... Well, take an IS-7 APCL pen, which is like 303. It means that you can just guaranteed butcher tanks like the Type 5 and E100 and Mouse. And you're not really going to struggle with those tanks. So we're getting our shot into the Scourge as we're plodding along. And I'm like, okay, the, the town's kind of struggling. It's been lost. We've got to get in there and help out. There's a 705A being attacked by Cranvon. So what I go for is the tracking shot. Unfortunately, he ends up shutting down my Cranvon. But the artillery slaps in. It's like, well, I'm an E50. Ram! <laughs> Ram that guy for 299. That's a super heavy tank, by the way. A super heavy. And we lost, like... What, 150, 200 health for doing nearly 300 damage to him? Yep, ramming. Ram, ram, ram. Fun, fun, fun. We're up to 3.9k damage with a bit of assistance. And we're going to go charging towards their cap. Because we know there were some tanks spotted at G FG8 along there. And then as we're going along, this 140 gets spotted. So we're going to try and cut into the cover here and try and get where our light tank is. Because I, I felt like that 140 might be yellowing him. We sort of, as soon as we see he's poking over to try and get a shot, we sort of wiggled a little bit to angle, and fortunately enough, he bounced off our side armor. It's the benefit of when you know tanks are coming for you, wiggle, 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 and you can bounce them. So as we put around the corner, I was like, ah, I could go for the 140, but there's a Hydra in the way. So we get the shot into the Hydra, and now the 140 is going for it. Just waiting for the shot to go into the 140, and he damages our ammo rack, because of course he does, but we use our repair kit to get the have a rack back in. It's something you have to bear in mind with the 50M that for some reason if you get shot, well it's just, I say for some reasons, because the ammo racks are in the side below the turret. If you get shot in the side, your ammo rack does get damaged a little, does get damaged every now and then. That can be annoying. So just bear that in mind. But now that 140 is gone, we're just getting shots into this Conqueror who is camping on G9. He's given us his, his lower plate every time, which is beautiful. 
And now there's the Valor, or the T95F3201, which is the unskinned Valor. We've got a shot into his upper plate, but he's caught out in the open there. And as he's retreating, we try and get a shot into the back of his turret, but unfortunately the gun just doesn't hit it. It's one of those things, RNG just loves to miss sometimes. Because pretty much the back of his turret was all we had in the scope, but it just missed. It is what it is. It happens sometimes, right? RNG just laughs at you. But now it's time to move in, because that guy's run away. The Conqueror's looking this way, so we're going to help the Griller out. Conqueror's coming over. We try and go for a shot. He pulled back at the last second, and I didn't expect it, and we ended up hitting his upper plate rather than his drive wheel, and we didn't get the shot in. We're, we're still going for the damage, though. We try and track this T95 FE211 in place, and we're going for the ram. It's like, hello, sir. The Griller low rolls, and we ram him to death for 120 odd. We can finish the game with 6.5k damage, 627 assistance, and a really nice game for the E50M. Solid tier 10 heavy tank, the pinnacle of the line. It's a hell of a lot of fun. The whole line in general is really solid. I just wish the E50M had that little bit more DPM, and I, I was kind of disappointed with the reforge in that way. But nonetheless, it's still the whole, like I said, the whole grind is nice, and this tank is well worth getting to. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. A great success!